The golden age of American cinema is defined as the time between 1929 and 1945 when the studio system was at its peak. The first colour movie, the first talking movie, the Oscars and animated cartoon movies. Five movie studios known as the Big Five, Paramount, RKO, MGM, Warner Brothers and Fox dominated the movie market. Along with three little studios, Universal Pictures, United Artists and Columbia. This is what is known as the studio system. Studios would even control the stakes of their own theatre chains. In some cases, one studio would even control all the theatres in a city. This ensured that their films would be distributed, no matter the quality. Lately I see you show me no attention. You're making me... Well, I'm not late! And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause! Actors, producers, directors and writers were all under contract, at the mercy of the studios. You keep on flirting. The studios were also infamous for owning their stars, a practice that is known as the star system. A star is made, created, carefully and cold-bloodedly built from nothing, said Louis B. Mayer. All I ever looked for was a face. If someone looked good for me, I'd have him tested. If a person looked good on film, if he photographed well, we could do the rest. But I'd like to make it clear that everything you do can be done by more than one. The more I miss you, the more Stars were expected away. to do nothing privately to undermine their believability, playing idealized protagonists. Studios would send scouts to spot promising young talent and contract them for years of work. If you don't recognise her on the left, this is actress Judy Garland, born Frances Ethel Gunn. Judy changed her name whilst touring with her two older sisters in their vaudeville act. MGM spotted her in 1935, soon to make her a star. With strict contracts, morality clauses and minimal child labour laws, studio bosses were able to push child stars to breaking point. Garland worked six days per week, sometimes 18 hour shifts, of constant singing and dancing to pump as many movies out as possible. To keep her energy up and force her weight down, studios plied her with pep pills, amphetamine uppers. When she couldn't sleep, they supplied sleeping pills. Substance abuse would become an issue she would fight for the remainder of her life until she died in 1969, age 47, of an overdose. Somewhere over the rainbow, birds fly. over the rainbow, oh why? Hollywood studios mainly agreed that movies should be an escape, not a reflection of reality. The Hayes Code banned morally unacceptable content. Although the code didn't mandate happy endings, it did prohibit any film villain from having one. Sexual contact was limited to kissing, violence was bloodless, and dialogue was devoid of profanity. More people than ever were visiting the cinema as a form of escapism. 
In an era of harsh reality, with great disparity and an economy gone bust, Hollywood became more of a dream factory than ever. Even in the depths of the Great Depression, between 60 and 80 million Americans went to the movies once a week or more. Continuity was favoured, with cuts made to look as seamless as possible. The function of mise-en-scene was to manufacture realism. Narratives were character-driven, had a clear sense of cause and effect and linearity, with a distinct resolution. The golden era of Hollywood finally came to an end due to two main factors, antitrust actions and the invention of television. The monopoly game of studios owning their own cinemas forced Assistant Attorney General Furman Arnold to take up a case against the eight major Hollywood corporations at the time. They were in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, which regulates competition among large corporations. As a result of the court case, every Hollywood corporation signed a consent decree agreeing to release their hold on spaces, to stop the pre-sale of films in various theatre districts, and to prohibit film companies from scheduling more than five films in a theatre. This, along with the introduction of television to households, meant less money was fueling the industry, thus creating a decline in filmmaking and profits. Hollywood's golden age were pivotal years in the history of filmmaking, and despite its many flaws, it brought us some of the greatest films of all time, and technological advances that were built upon to create the films of today. Scared stiff as a baby I keep holding on Zing, up goes the string Beautiful thing and you're gone I hate to see you go But in my heart I'm